Hi everyone, thanks for joining us as we continue to read some classic Mother Goose stories during our chapter book story time. I'm Miss Erin and we're here at the Caribou Public Library in Caribou, Maine. So the Golden Goose book is what we're reading from with drawings by L. Leslie Brooke. And today's reading is called The Story of the Three Little Pigs. I'll bet you've heard it before. <laughs> All right, so here's what happens to the three little pigs. Once upon a time, there was an old sow with three little pigs, and as she had not enough to keep them, she sent them out to seek their fortune. The first went off to meet a man with a bundle of straw and said to him, Please, man, give me that straw to build me a house, which the man did, and the little pig built a house with it. Presently came along a wolf and knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Uh -oh. Here she is. This is the mother sow. She had to send her piglets off because she could not care for them herself any longer. Let me come in, says the wolf, to which the pig answered, No, no. By the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in and ate up the little pig. <gasps> Here he is. He had his bundle of straw to build with. And here is the wolf. Blows it away. Oh my goodness. What a terrible end. The second pig met a man with a bundle of furs, furs, and, the, and said, please man, give me that furs to build a house, which the man did, and the pig, pig built his house. <clears throat> then along came the wolf and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I will huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and puffed and he puffed and he huffed and at last he blew the house down and ate up the second little pig. Mm. I think those are sticks. The terminology is different. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks and said, please man, Give me those bricks to build a house with. So the man gave him the bricks and he built his house with them. And so the wolf came as he did to the other little pigs. Yikes, here he is building his brick house. The wolf came and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Well, he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but he could not get the house down. When he found that he could not, with all his huffing and puffing, blow down the house, he said, little pig, I know where there is a nice field of turnips. Where, said the little pig, Oh, in Mr. Smith's home field. And if you will be ready tomorrow morning, I will call for you. And we will go together and get some for dinner. Mm, what do you think of that plan? Here he is, next to his brick house, trying to blow it down. <laughs> Very well, said the little pig. I will be ready. What time do you mean to go? Oh, at six o'clock. Well, the little pig got up at five and got the turnips and was home again before six. Here he is with his bag full of turnips at five o'clock in the morning. Does this sound a little bit different than the version maybe you've heard before? All right, so the wolf came and he said, Little pig, are you ready? Ready, said the little pig. I 
I've been home, I've been and back again, and I got a nice potful for dinner. The wolf felt very angry at this, but thought that he would be up to the little pig somehow or other. So he said, little pig, I know where there is a nice apple tree. <laughs> here he is talking to the pig through the window. And here is his bag of turnips. Mm, do you think the pig will want apples? Where, said the pig, down at Merry Garden, replied the wolf, and if you will not deceive me, I will come for you at five o'clock tomorrow, and we will go together and get some apples. Well, the little pig awoke at four the next morning, and bustled up, went off for the apples, hoping to get back before the wolf came. But he had farther to go, and had a tree to climb, so that just as he was coming down from it, he saw the wolf coming, which as you may suppose, frightened him very much. When the wolf came up, he said, Little pig, what? Are you here before me? Are they very nice apples? <laughs> yes, very, said the little pig. I will throw you down one. He threw it so far that while the wolf was gone to pick it up, the little pig jumped down and ran home. <laughs> there he is, jumping down from the apple tree as the wolf runs off after the apple that he threw down. He seemed to get the better of that wolf, didn't he? The next day, the wolf came again and said to the little pig, little pig, there is a fair in the town this afternoon. Will you go? Oh yes, said the little pig, I'll go. What time shall you be ready? At three, said the wolf. So the little pig went off before time as usual and got to the fair and bought a butter churn. He was on his way home with it when he saw the wolf coming. Mm, then he could not tell what to do. So he got into the churn to hide and in doing so, turned it around and it began to roll and rolled down the hill with the pig inside it, which frightened the wolf so much that he ran home without going to the fair. Here he is hiding inside the butter churn, rolling down the hill. There's the fair off in the distance. <laughs> now the pig is going to try to escape. He went to the little pig's house and told him how frightened he had been by a great round thing which came down the hill past him. Then the little pig said, <laughs> I frightened you, did I? I had been to the fair and bought a butter churn, and when I saw you, I got into it and rolled down the hill. Then the wolf was very angry indeed and declared that he would eat up the little pig and that he would get down the chimney after him. Oh, the chimney, oh no. When the little pig saw what he was about, he hung on the pot full of he hung the pot full of water and made up a blazing fire and just as the wolf was coming down took off the cover of the pot and in fell the wolf and the little pig put on the cover again in an instant boiled him up and ate him for supper and lived happily ever after here is a picture of the wolf climbing up his nice brick house to the chimney and then falling down into the pot. Yikes. So instead of the wolf getting the better of the pig, the pig got the better of the wolf. That's the end of our chapter for today. Our last story in the book is called Tom Thumb and we'll be reading that one next time. See you then. Bye for now. <laughs>